So I wanted to show off this program that I made for studying Japanese. It's a program that I started working on over a year ago, though originally it was much more of a vocabulary and kanji drilling program. Uh, but eventually I had uh, second thoughts about the best way to study a language, and I eventually gravitated more towards the story-based approach. And so the primary concept here is that you have a set of stories, and here I can click on the story, and you see it has the text of the story with timestamps, there's an audio player, because this comes from an audio source. And I can click on words and get their definitions, plus also information about the kanji. And I can also drill the words in the story. So I still retain the, the kanji and vocabulary drilling aspect. But in general, what I primarily do in this program is I just simply read through the story as I listen to the audio. And one of the primary sources I use for story material is this site called Comprehensible Japanese. There's a YouTube channel, but uh, if you subscribe to the Patreon, then from their site, you can also get a lot of members only content. And here, I'll just pick a random free, yeah, I'll pick one of the, the, the free stories. I'll just pick this one. And let's say we want to add it into our set of stories in the program. So I'll need the title, copy that into the top uh, entry field. And then I will get the link, plug that in here. I'll get the transcript and I generally, yeah, I want, the, I want them separated by lines, so this is actually conveniently what I want to copy. Uh, the footing on it will get uh, not not included in the copy, but I don't actually want it anyway. I don't tend to like reading footing on it. Um, okay, so that's what I need, but also I want the file uh, from the MP3. Um, if, you, if your story is from a YouTube source, then you can just plug in the YouTube link, but uh, otherwise you'll need to get an audio file. So here I'll, I'll save this. I'm going to copy that name because I'm going to need that name. And then in this field, that, that, that copies it into a directory under my uh, under the, app, the application directory. And then I have it in a subdirectory called ignore, and then the name of the file. Okay, so now I'm ready to create the story. Uh, it creates the story. Uh, you can see here at the top, go in. And well, it doesn't have timestamp inf information. I'm gonna have to fix this. I'm having to go through the story and set all the timestamps. So one of the first things I'll typically do is I will, well, I can click on any timestamp to immediately play from that timestamp. Or I can, of course, hit the play up here on the left. So here, I'll just make it very quiet. So I'll just sit here, listen, and then uh, when I get to a certain timestamp, when I get to the start of this line, I'll just alt-click on the timestamp. It'll set it to what the current timestamp of the audio is. So I just listen line by line the, the first time, and as I go, I'll just click at the appropriate moment for each line. And then I can very easily edit also. If I select a line, click it, I can then hit uh, minus and plus to adjust the timestamp by uh, half a second. So it's fairly easy to add in timestamps for each line, though it's, you know, it'd be nice if it were automatic, but it's, it's not too onerous. And I, I mean, you end up listening to the story for the first time anyway, so I don't find it like actually all that much extra work. Um, another thing you want to do in some cases, you want to split up the lines or, or join them. So I can control click on a timestamp and it'll uh, just join it with the previous line. I'll split that again. Uh, I can I can split. I can just control click on any word, and it'll use it'll split that to its own line. So sometimes that's useful, particularly for very long sentences, or or maybe the original text wasn't properly broken into uh, sentence by sentence. I, I tend to prefer each sentence being its own line, except in exceptions of very short things like this that aren't even proper sentences. Um, and actually, in some cases with long long sentences with many clauses, I will sometimes like split. Uh, on the clause, so like maybe here I would I would split this onto its own line. Uh, anyway, that's my that's my preference. Um, let's see, one more thing you can do, kind of a hidden feature, is you can alt click, uh, sorry, yeah, alt middle click on a timestamp, and it'll take that line and open it up in Google Translate. Here I'll do it with a more interesting line. Yeah, so that's an easy way to do translation. Arguably, there should just be some, you know, if, if Google provided an easy to use and a free API, I would just automatically get all the translations for every line and just show it in line here. But uh, this is the, the hacky next best solution I found. Uh, another feature is I can middle click on a line to just mark it. And I find this useful for um, particularly, uh, well, if there's a word with interesting vocabulary or interesting grammar, um, I will just mark those lines as interesting. And so when it comes time to review a story, repeat it again, um, I will in many cases just first go through all the, the marked lines and, and maybe not even read the rest because maybe the rest isn't very interesting. So it's just a, sort of a way to get, you know, more efficiently get more out of each story when you when you repeat it. Okay, so actually go back to the catalog here, the, the main menu. So 
a key idea is that uh, I think a key part of the process is that you do repeat these stories. You don't want to just read each one once. Um, I, I do find when, when I when I go through a story the first time, well, first I listen through it and mark the timestamps. But aside from that, a key thing I need to do is I need to basically do an intensive reading process. I need to go word by word, look up every word, figure out grammatically how it all fits together, what it means. You know, one thing I'll do is I'll open up the translation. And if I can't figure out like what some part means, I'll like delete the rest and see what, you know, what, what translation Google gives me for one subsection of the sentence. Tricks like that. Anyway, whatever it takes to try and figure out what all the pieces of the sentence mean and how they work together, I will do that in, in at least one time. It is a slow, intensive process. It takes me, you know, 30 minutes to get through five minutes of audio often when I, when I read that way, but it, it it's a, a valuable exercise. It, it's, it's an investment each time you start a new story and, and go through this intensive process, but I, I think it's basically what you have to do to understand what you're looking at. Um, oh, so importantly, one, one feature here is you can click on a word and you get the definitions and plus the kanji information. Though I use this uh, plugin 1010, you can see as I hover over on, on any web page, not just this web page, I, um, I just hover over and it gives me definitions and also I can get the kanji information. I find this extremely useful. In fact, I generally use this instead of clicking on the words. I don't click on the words very often. Uh, important feature that you may have noticed, but I didn't explain. And that is the fact that the text is uh, syntax highlighted based on part of speech. So verbs, for example, are in this dark red and then the auxiliary portion is in this pale red pink color. Um, determiners, as you might call them, are in this blue, particles are yellow, nouns are white, etc., etc. Um, so I'm using this open source library that does analysis, uh, grammatical analysis of Japanese text, and it does a pretty good job. It's not perfect, of course, but it, it's pretty good. Um, in some more advanced text, I do find it, you know, makes more mistakes, but for the most part, it's quite accurate. And so I use that not just to identify the parts of speech, but also to effectively identify what the drill words are. Um, like, for example, for verbs, instead of um, adding every single form of every verb into the drill word set, it'll, it, it identifies the base form. And so only the base form gets added as a word in your, in your drill set. Uh, also it'll add the kanji of every word into the drill set. So anytime you add a story and it has a new kanji that's never been, been seen before, that'll be added as a, as a, uh, word to drill. Um, also you'll notice that some words are highlighted and the idea there, well, if I click a word, I can then hit uh, the keys one, two, three, or four to set its rank. See at the bottom, I'm setting the rank of the word and the, the highlighting changes based on what the rank is. Um, well, the idea of the rank is that for drill purposes, you want words to have a cooldown. Every time you drill a word, it, it uh, gets marked with a timestamp and, and goes on cooldown. And rank one words go on cooldown for three hours. Rank two words go on cooldown for three days. And then rank three words go on cooldown for 30 days. And then lastly, rank four words go on cooldown for a thousand days, which is effectively forever. So in practice, like, like say I encounter a word that I happen to already know, and I don't want to ever see it in my drills again. So I'll just simply mark it as four and effectively dismiss it from my drills entirely. Um, but otherwise the idea is that when you encounter a new word, you want to like have it, you know, promote it up the ranks. Like you'll drill it a few times and, and as I drill, same deal, I can, I can hit uh, for the word at the top here, I can hit one, two, three, or four to, to set its rank as you see here. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe if I decide, okay, I'm actually pretty good on this one. So maybe it'll inch it up to two or no, it's even a three already, whatever. It's all up to my own discretion and I can change any of this at any time, really. Uh, notice also in the drills, I can filter based on rank. So currently it's, it's matching all words of all ranks. Uh, currently it says it's, it's only drilling me on words and kanji that are off cooldown, but I can say only show me ones that are on cooldown or show me both. Uh, I can also filter based on type. I can and drill just the kanji characters or katakana words, which I sometimes find useful, or or verbs, which I find also sometimes useful. Uh, yeah, so a number of options there. Um, notice also it's giving you the breakdown for the story of of the words in the story and how many are on cooldown at this moment. So currently this story has say uh, 209 rank four words, 58 rank one words, 58 of which are currently off cooldown, which I guess is all of them. Anyway, so back to the story page. There's this option here. You can toggle whether it is highlighting all rank one, three words or just the ones that are off cooldown. Um, by default, it's only the ones off cooldown. You can adjust the playback speed for the, the player. Uh, and then generally the idea is that every time you read a story, you want to hit this button to mark the story as read. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to for each story, increment the, the, the total count of times you've read that story. <clears throat> and then we also have this read countdown, which currently is set to three. I could just at any time modify this to anything I want. 
And so if I want to repeat the story five times, then I would set the countdown to five. And then over the course of the next few days, the next week, I would read it up to five times. And when I hit the mark story as read button, it'll not only increment the total read count, it'll also decrement the countdown if it's greater than zero. Again, though, what stories you read and what order is, is entirely up to you. This is just sort of a, a tool to help you track what you were planning to do, sort of loosely keep track of, of uh, how often you were supposed to do something or, or plan to do it. Um, so back on the main page, in fact, here, you also can set the countdown here. Every time you read the story, it sets a timestamp. And so here in the left column, it's, it's sorting the stories based on the time you last read it. Uh, here's the total read count. And then unknown and weak, those are rank one and rank two words, respectively. So this first story has 106 rank one words because I just added it and 16 rank two words. Notice also this checkbox, which is on by default. When this is on, we're only seeing stories with a countdown greater than zero. If I disable it, now I'm seeing all the stories. And lastly, there's this link here to drill all the words and all the kanji of all the stories rather than just one story. And honestly, I don't find this particularly useful all that much. I don't, I don't actually really use this feature except sometimes for drilling katakana or sometimes uh, for drilling verbs. Uh, those are the two primary use cases where I sometimes find this useful. So if you want to use this program, you just need to go to the repo on GitHub and well, you just clone the repo. And if you're on Windows, you can just use the executable that's in the app subdirectory. That'll run the program. And then you just go into your browser and navigate to localhost 8080. On other platforms though, you'll need to build the executable. That's pretty easy though. All you need is to install go. And then from the command line, you run go get and then go build and that should work. Uh, there's this link here uh, where I give some advice about how to go about using input. And at the bottom here, I have some other recommended sources of input. Uh, like for example, this is very good. Japanese with Monaco. So let me actually demonstrate adding one more story here. Let's see, I'll just randomly pick some, um, some story. She has the transcripts here freely available. That's very handy. So I'll just grab this transcript, add it in the content. I will need to, ooh. Oh, right. In this case, I will actually go to your YouTube. <laughs> Yes, so this is an example of, of we'll use YouTube, the YouTube link instead because uh, otherwise it's, it's not, I don't know of a better way to get the, an easy way to get the MP3s. So I'll copy this link there. Um, if I have a YouTube link, I don't need an audio file path because the player will be in an embedded YouTube player. And then uh, the title. So there we go, title. Now I create, come in here and no, all the same controls work, so I can just click on any, uh, well, I have a bad example here, I'll just jump to random. Yeah, so all, all the controls work the same with the YouTube Embedded Player. Anyway, that's my Japanese training program. I hope it's useful to someone. There's a number of ways in which it could be improved for sure. If you had feedback, let me know. Uh, one obvious thing is I could adapt it to support other languages. Uh, right now it assumes you're entering Japanese text and uses a uh, Japanese parsing, but but there's really no reason it couldn't support other languages. If you're interested in that, let me know. In fact, if you're interested in trying to contribute yourself, uh, I encourage you to do so. The, the code is, is really very simple. There's not, well, you know, it's not perfect code by any means, but it's relatively clean. And well, there's just not a lot of it really. It's actually in the end, a quite simple program for as many iterations I went through and many variations of how the program functioned over the, over the years. So I developed it in the end, it's, it's really quite simple. 